What is the perception of how Russia, for example, has reacted to these leaks? Well, I think uh, that's absolutely correct. Uh, everyone knows what the situation is in Russia, including the Russians. And I think uh, uh, you have the rhetorical level, and then you also have uh, how nations really behave uh, underneath all that, and that is uh, nations behave in their self-interest. And it's in the U.S. and uh, Russian interests uh, to cooperate more because of the rising China. And so I think uh, that's what you're seeing. I think uh, the START treaty won't be endangered by this because uh, the Russians need that more mm -hmm. than the United States. And I also think that the United States needs Russia because of China and that sort of thing. And so I think it's a mutually beneficial relationship. And this will be a passing uh, uh, ship in the night, and uh, things will go on much as they have been well, improving the relationship. Depending on where you sit around the globe, corruption is an easy word to band around. I spoke to a politician recently that said in, in the third world we might call it corruption, in the first world we call it bureaucracy. Um, how, how does that sit with you in terms of what goes on perhaps I I in the United States? Well, I think you could probably, some people have compared Russia to the U.S. in the 1890s or late eight, 19th century. Uh, when the robber barons were were around, so maybe it's just a stage of development uh, after you get a capitalist economy, et cetera. But uh, I think th that's true. Corrup corruption uh, is in the eye of the beholder, I think, to some extent. And we have there are international indices of corrupt corruption, and Russia doesn't really do very well on that. But whether it's the most corrupt state in the world, probably not. But uh, I think some of the stuff is probably true. But I think the observation that these are uh, impressions of P uh, U.S. diplomats that they've talked to people in Russia, et cetera. And so it doesn't make it complete fact, but I think there's probably something to it. But as I say, mm -hmm. uh, countries uh, should be dealt with as they are, not as the United States would like to ha have them be. And unfortunately, U.S. policy much of the time is dealt with, uh, we want this country to be uh, li more like us and that sort of thing. And I think uh, Russia is what it is, and I think it's a valuable, uh, it's still the most important country in the world for the U.S. simply because of the nuclear weapons aimed at the United States. Uh, it's the only existential threat that the United States has ever faced. Now, the Cold War is over, and we're mending relations, and I think that's a great thing. And I don't care if uh, Vladimir uh, Putin is the most corrupt person on the planet. Uh, I think it's a good idea to uh, mend relations and to get along with Russia better, because there's absolutely no reason not to uh, now that the Cold War is over and uh, other, other things uh, are more important. But I think those yeah. nuclear warheads still exist. And uh, there are still a lot of them out there, and I think that that's why the START sure. Treaty is so important. I think that uh, the treaty will eventually go through. Uh, the Republicans are raising the price. Now, whether I, w I thought it would go through uh, in this lame duck session, but it's had more problems, I think, uh, because the Republicans know that they can get a better deal when the, when the more Republicans come to town after January. But I think uh, the Cold War is over, and there's still vestiges of it. But I think uh, even the Republicans probably realize that this treaty uh, is in the U.S. best interest, especially some of the more re responsible Republicans. And the Tea Party ideology is cutting the budget, not uh, uh, being aggressive in foreign policy. And so I think... Uh, uh, you'll, uh, you'll have some hardliners coming to town, but I think uh, eventually the treaty will go through. And I think, you know, if you would have said uh, back in the Soviet days that uh, uh, Russia would be an autocracy with corruption, but it would be capitalist and friendlier to the U.S. and a lot less powerful, if you would have said that would be great. Mm. Well, now we have that, and uh, people are complaining about it. So I think uh, we're in much better shape than we were during the Cold War. I don't think there's going to be a renewed arms race. I think the treaty will go through, and I think it's really needed because uh, the, the two countries have no reason not to improve their relations. Transparency and trust between uh, Russia and the United States was perhaps not as, as best as it could be. And one example was given that when American, uh, or when Russian military advisors come to the United States, they're shown uh, military bases, they speak with military personnel, yet when American counterparts go to Russia, they barely get out of a conference center and don't go to military bases, barely speak to anybody uh, less than the, the higher-ups in, in the military uh, pecking order. Uh, 
that trust deficit is something that has to be overcome even uh, during the Obama administration and, and new Congress. Well, I think, and that's why the treaty is valuable. The warhead cuts are only 30 percent, and you know the, the launchers are cut as well, but not that much. And uh, but the real thing about the treaty is it mandates this transparency, and we haven't had that since the treaty lapsed. Uh, and I think that's uh, enforced transparency, and that's even more important uh, when you're dealing with Russia, because as you point out, uh, w the United States is a, still a more open society than Russia. Now, I think we have better access than we did during the Cold War, and uh, that's good. So I think we need to compare everything with what happened during the Cold War, but I think this treaty is uh, enforced uh, verification and and uh, uh, transparency and that's a good thing it requires Russia to open up its nuclear weapons uh, are, uh, complex to the US uh, and I think it, the same uh, with the US uh, opening it up to Russia but that's very important because I and that's the most important thing in the treaty so that each side knows what it's doing and that's uh, very important uh, when you still have all these warheads aimed at each other and uh, it's it's still an existential threat because those warheads are there now I don't think there's the tension that there was during the Cold War but Russia is very important to the United States from a security standpoint and people forget that because it's still the most important country because it still has all those well, nuclear me, warheads and, let, uh, indeed, and, let me bring, and we let me still bring need in, to have good relations with yeah, sorry.